Greetings, Ian from RTO here. Welcome to another classic album show. And uh, as you see, the light hasn't improved since the Christmas albums sort of review. Um, I've turned one light off, but it's still dark and dingy. I don't think we're going to get any better than this for the whole day, actually. Anyway, something to keep us warm and Christmassy, or, is, or not, if the case may be. So the album we're going to look at in this classic album is the Beach Boys Christmas album. Now this was the seventh album released by the Beach Boys and it was released on November the 9th, 1964 on Capitol Records. And it contained five original songs and seven standard Christmas themes. This album proved to be a long running success during subsequent Christmas seasons initially reaching number six on the Billboard's Christmas LPs charts in its initial release, and eventually going gold. Music historian James Perone wrote that he regarded it as one of the finest holiday albums of the rock era. Shall we have a look at this? This is the reason I've done it today, because I'm a bit doubtful about this. So, of course, the Beach Boys at the time were Al Jardine, Mike Love, Brian Carl and Dennis Wilson. First track on here is a track that I really do like, and it's Little Saint Nick. Um, very Christmassy, Beach Boysy sound. Best track on the album. The Man With All The Toys. Now, it's hard to associate this song with Christmas. Because it sounds like a surf song. And this is where I think I, I find it difficult. I cannot... Christmas to me is bells and... It's a good song, don't get me wrong. But I cannot associate this with Christmas. I'm sorry. <laughs> Santa's Beard. Again, it's, it's a good tune. But I just cannot associate this style of music with Christmas. I love the Beach Boys, but no, I just don't get it. Um, Merry Christmas, baby. It's the same again. It's a surf song that mentions the word Christmas. Christmas Day. It's a very short tune, but... Uh, it's all right. It's got that little Christmassy feel to it. There's some not there's lovely singing on it, but the, again, it's very difficult to associate this with Christmas. Then they do a version of Frosty the so Snowman. Now, this is quite good. It's not a bad version. Um, it's got a bit, it does sound Christmassy, so I'll give them that one. And then they do a very bad version of We Three Kings of Oriental. <laughs> no. No! Stop it! Yeah. Then they do Blue Christmas. Okay, it's not too bad. Santa Claus is coming to town. I like the song, I love the song, but what? they did is turn it into a surfing song and there's brass on this it just doesn't work for me then they do a version of white christmas it's probably the worst version of this song i've ever heard in my life ah oh. i'll be home for christmas this is quite good um the harmonies actually sound all right and i don't mind it then they do a really good version of Old Lang Syne. Uh, the harmonies are wonderful on this. It's, it's pretty good. So just have a look how it did. As I said, it got to, um, on the US Christmas LPs billboard in 64. It got to number 6. 
Um, but then it was re in re released in 2019 and it got to number 107 actually on the US Billboard 200. The only other place outside of um, the United States that it's charted, and that was in the Canadian album charts in this year. It's got to number 65. Oh, as an album, it's okay. As a Christmas album, it just doesn't do nothing for me for a Christmas album. Um, it's solid. But I think it didn't work outside of America because, especially here in Europe, to to us Christmas is cold, crisp, mostly raining Christmas Day or cloudy. But if you live, say, like in on the west coast of America, California, you can associate to it. I get it. You know, it's sold well in America. Um, it's just a typical Beast Boys album. It's got some lovely harmonies on it. Some of the interpretation of Christmas songs are not my cup of tea. I do don't mind this. It's not a bad album, bad album, but it doesn't sound very Christmassy for me. So um, I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of six out of ten. Certainly an album I don't listen to at Christmas. Um, but I get why, I think I understand why it didn't sell outside of America. Okay then, that's all for today. Um, tomorrow we're bringing Ladies Day a week forward because it's usually the last week, the last Tuesday of the month. But as next week we've got little specials on for you, I'm going to do it tomorrow. And tomorrow we're going to look at one of the pioneering rock and roll bands in America. The Runaways, which produced Jonah, Joan Jett and Lita Ford. And then tomorrow's retro ranking is probably one of the most influential and most fantastic songwriters of the 20th century. And that is Miss Carol King. So I'll be picking my top 10 songs by Carol King. And boy, was it hard. So that's all for today. I hope the weather's the lights are a bit better tomorrow because it's just been dark and dingy. Just a reminder, tomorrow is also the closing date for your nominations for Wally of the Year. Uh, so on Thursday, um, we'll have a vote on the channel on live stream and also the poll will go up tomorrow. Or probably, probably tomorrow night I'll put it up. I'll put them up tomorrow night. So you've got the whole of Tuesday night and Wednesday. And I'll close the poll on uh, Thursday round about. It'll be done during the live stream. Okay, have a great day everybody. And I will see you all tomorrow. Bye for now.